Hey everybody, my name is Brent Thomas Colby, the first. And I'm Steve the Salmon, just like the fish. <laughs> oh! That's right, we're in a little bit different location today. Yeah, yeah, we are in my boss's office. This is the office of Don Ross, our network team leader here at the Northwest Ministry Network. And uh, Cool guy. Yeah, you can figure out kind of a lot of, a lot about him by just observing the background a little he bit. He likes fish and yes. eagles and treats. And what you can't see, my favorite thing in his office, is an autographed copy of a movie poster for the one and only Hunt for the Red October. Mm. Yeah, it's a good movie. Good also movie. A good book. Yeah, good book. Yeah, and uh, a guy yeah. named Sean Connery starred in it. Maybe you've heard of him. The only Scottish Russian ever. <laughs> hey, you're movie. listening to the Fusion Children's Ministry podcast, and today I hear we're not sponsored by something very exciting. We are. Well, we are not sponsored by the one and only Gandalf. You can't not pass. Well. Brent is also breaking things in his boss's office, so. <laughs> That's right, I don't think he watches this. You know what? It's fine, because I just get to leave at the end of the day, and you work for him. Sorry, Don. What's something awesome today? We have something awesome that I genuinely am thinking of placing an order for right away. I just, I'm concerned more stuff is gonna fall off. I'm just oh. saying that the things that you put on the bookshelf have all fallen off. The yeah. things that I have put on the bookshelf Totally this is this is what fell off. Uh, this is a friend of uh, actually this is Don's son and a friend of mine is a little. I thought you were going to say your son and a friend of Don, but yeah, you know, I got it right. Anyways, I see where we went awry. Uh, two words, Stephen. Yes. Lego tape. Okay. Think what? about what? it. Hold Think on. about it. Lego and let tape. me show you about it. Okay. Um, it is of course a Kickstarter, and I just want you to check it out. Now they can't call it Lego tape because of brand infringement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I feel like that's like with Gandalf too. <sighs> yeah. So this is Nimuno Loops, the toy block tape. The idea is you get the, the old nubbins from your Legos and you put them, that's what they're called, right? No. You put them on a tape and so you can stick the tape anywhere and thus you can place your Legos Oh, anywhere. that's cool. Yeah, look at that. I like that. So there's the nubbins there on the desk, on Man, the side, on the, what? You have to get your like weight differentials right though on your Legos that you're putting <laughs> on the side of the wall because some of those get pretty big and you just stack it on there and in the middle of the night, what happened with this, this picture is gonna happen oh, all the all your work. Yeah, my boys love this yeah. on, their, on their room. That would be really cool. What if like, you could get like the craggle, you know, from the glue yep. and you could like glue it on the ceiling almost. That'd be cool. Cool. Thing, that'd be cool. um, a universe of limitless possibilities. So yeah, clearly, nice. there's nothing you can't do with. Don't call it Lego. Yeah, Lego tape. Not 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 Lego tape. Yeah, yeah. Nice. What are we talking about today, Grant? <sighs> Something very very important. Okay. And you need to look at us in the eyes because you watching this need to pay attention. Today we are going to discuss how to say. No. No. Oh, I was hoping we could say it at the same time. We did. How to say no. It is the one of the most critical things you can learn to do, not just in children's ministry, in any ministry position. Mm -hmm. Because unlike most jobs, you have people asking you, I mean, the, it's true for many jobs, but specifically for ministry. Ministry is a whole other animal, though. People are asking you for stuff to do stuff all the time. Right. And then they go, but this is like for people, and that's your job. So how are you supposed to say no to that? It's... Difficult. It is very difficult. So um, that's what we're talking about. And I'm just curious with you, Stephen, mm -hmm. are you good at saying no? Are you bad at saying no? Where do you land on the, uh, uh, the no spectrum? I personally think I'm good at saying no. We just got some um, peer reviews done. And okay. apparently I'm not as good at saying no as <laughs> some other people think I am. Okay. So um, obviously... Uh, I need to get better at it too, but... Um, Did you like not turn in a peer review? You're like, no, I'm not doing this. <laughs> no, like, you no, need to work no. on that. I think, I think I get caught up in the, in the, the team, right? Hey, we're a team. We need to be yeah. doing this together. We're in the trenches together. And, like, and so I want to help. And then and I might know how to do it, right. but my boss has also come and talked to me and says, every time you take one of these jobs from these people and you do it for them, instead of saying no, figure it out yourself, you're denying them the opportunity to learn how to do it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's tough, especially when you're a perfectionist, if you have a pretty high standard, you yeah. want to kind of make sure everything gets done the right way, I'm, which I'm is just very much that your way. way. Yeah. And uh, whether but or not that is the right way. <laughs> yeah, that's the so, right way. You know. And so you do it, and you do it, and you do it, and you yeah. do it, and pretty soon you're stressed out, you're exhausted. Yeah. Your stuff kind of looks crappy because you're doing it all halfway yourself, and you have no team because right. you no one's learned how to do anything. Yeah. And you have, and there's so much stuff, right, and, and you're trying to do it all, and it's like, but why? Yeah. Why are we trying to do so much stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Like, is that is that really what we think it takes to run a successful operation or whatever it is we're doing? Right. Well, I think that's probably the first step in enabling yourself to say no to stuff. Yeah. Is to know what you are about, because inversely, you will then know what you're not about. Right. Um, we had a great ministry approach us just recently. They had an awesome ministry. They had a great kind of kit together. They asked okay. us to promote it to our network. And on every account, this was an excellent ministry. It yeah. had to do with kids. It had to do, it was a perfect fit. We had Sweet. nothing there. But I had to tell them no, because it was not what we were about. Oh, okay. And by saying no to that thing, yeah. it freed me up to say yes to a lot of other things right. that we are about. Yeah. And it's tough when you look at something and you're like, this is good. There's nothing bad with it. But why why wouldn't we do it? Well, yeah. it's not central to why we're here and what our mission is, what we're trying right. to accomplish. I heard someone talk about once that they had to learn how to say no because they were doing so much stuff in the year, but it was things that they just did that year. It weren't, wasn't things that they were just carrying over. Right. And that the moment they said no to a bunch of good things that they were doing, they were able to focus on five great things that they were doing yeah. and really make those things way better than they'd ever been before it actually brought more people in. Yeah. Which yeah. is crazy. You'd think more events, more stuff, get it out there to the people. No, they did five things as best as they possibly yeah. could, and that actually reached more people than the 20 things that they were doing before. I think churches often have an unhealthy relationship between quality and quantity of yes. events. They think, oh, yes. this one thing worked well once, but these 10 things, you know, if that worked well once, right. what if we so did 10 things? I want 10, 10 more of the exact kind of event happening yeah. One a month for the rest of the year. It's like, oh my yeah. goodness. We're scratching our heads going, why doesn't this thing work anymore? It used yeah. to work. Yeah. Well, you got volunteers who are lying in a corner in the fetal position because they're scared. You got <laughs> yeah. a pastor who doesn't pull out all their hair because nothing's going right. And you're like, oh, what's going on? Yeah. I, I thought this was great. No. And everyone's just, just, just spent, burnt out, everything. Yeah. I realize every time I say yes to something, there's like 10 other good things I have to say no to. Right. And that 10 to 1 ratio, I mean, that's, it sounds like an exaggeration, but it may be even an underestimation. Yeah. Every time you agree or decide to do a thing, there's probably 10 other things that you could have done or would have done that you now have to say no yeah. to. Because um, a halfway done thing is, is, I mean, 10 halfway done things is less effective than just one thing that's completely and done. And part of being a leader, part of being in charge and what high capacity people are actually looking for from you as a leader is this ability to say no, yeah. to lead. If you're saying yes to everything and burning everyone out, they're gonna lead. They're like, this is unsustainable. Yeah. Uh, Steven, can I do an exercise with you real quick? Okay, sure. grab a pen. Just pretend to type as I do this. Grab a pen and paper. Here's what I want you to do at home. I want you to write down 25 goals that you have. Oh, this wow. Is a, this is a Stephen Covey thing. So if you've seen it before, do you, do you like that guy? Yeah. So write down 25 goals. Do you write them all down? Okay. okay. You can pause at home so you've written them all down. Okay, now hit play. We're now, reading the Stephen Covey here's thing. what I want you to do is to circle the top five of those 25. So okay. you have 25 goals. These are the things yep. I'd like to do. There's five of these I really want to do. We're doing one of his books right now, Four Disciplines of Execution, oh, and goes through all this. So good. Yeah. So you circled five. Now, you have to pick the one thing that you really want to do out of that top five. Right. You got it? Yeah. Okay, so that becomes your goal. Those other four become the things that you must avoid at all costs. Because if there's anything that's going to distract you from your goal, it's going to be those four things because they're really close to your goal. They're excellent. They are the cream of the crop. And, and yet, they're really good. Yeah, yeah. But they're not your main thing. You only get one main thing. Yeah. And guys, it's so difficult. It's so hard. Yeah. So what do you do? How do you self-regulate? How do you check yourself and make sure you're not just going nuts with a bunch of different goals? So this year, our staff is doing this all 
and we have to go to a weekly meeting where we report on the goal. Wait, every single week? Every week and show a scorecard of how what we're doing is putting forth that goal. Yeah. And if the scorecard isn't moving, we have to explain how we didn't do the things that we said we were going to do our commitments for that week. Yeah. Either how they didn't work or go, yeah, you know what? I got distracted and I didn't do those things. And they're going to go, well, you can't do that. <laughs> you, 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 you can't do that. Yeah, you're not okay, doing so your that's, job. That, those are short-term goals on a weekly right. basis. What's the relationship between those and maybe some of your long-term goals? So those weekly commitments have to be supporting what we call a lead measure. And okay. your lead measure has to be going towards your wildly important goal or the WIG. Is right. what they say, the WIG goal. That's a, that's a Covey, I think either Stephen or Sean, mm -hmm. one of the Coveys um, kind of thing. And um, so their weekly commitment is supporting this lead measure. And the lead measure then is like on a scale and your goal is here and you're leveraging as much stuff as you can to finally accomplish. Leveraging? Yeah, leverage. Leverage, leverage? It's all a matter of leverage. <laughs> Depends, if you're, if you're on this side of the pond, I think you say it one way. If you're okay. on the other side, yeah. it's a different way, I don't know. There are tons of resources out there to help tons. you focus. Yeah. One great book I really love is called Essentialism by Greg McCohen. You're giving McCohen. me grief about leverage. You're talking about essentialism. <laughs> That's a, this is a giant word. It is a great book and if you're like, where do I I start focusing my energy. I know intuitively I say yes to too much stuff. How do I figure out what is most important? Yeah. That is a great place to start. We'll have a link for the book below. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if, you've, if you're just trying to figure out where to start, um, that's one good place. Covey is a great, yeah. great resource as well. Yeah, he's awesome. So yeah, if you have an exercise, if you have something you do that helps you keep focused or keeps your ministry in alignment with your goals or your mission, we'd love to hear about it in the comments yeah. below. Yeah, let us know. Shoot us something on Twitter. Um, Twitter handles will be somewhere. But uh, this is Stephen Salmon. And Brent Thomas, Kobe the First. And Fusion Ministry Podcast, signing off. Thank <laughs> you.